bestbookbits.com brings you the top 20 spirituality books. With over 500 book summaries currently featured on bestbookbits.com, this new series titled Top 20 Books will dispense the wisdom of the top 20 books on subjects like spirituality, personal development, money, health, sales, habits, business, marketing, time management, and more in one presentation. The top 20 books chosen is my take on the best books on spirituality I've come across and done summaries on. If I have missed a great book on spirituality you have read, let me know in the comments below. All books are featured on the website bestbookbits.com as summaries in all formats like video, audio, and written, and PDF. Get ready to learn everything about spirituality from the top gurus on the planet. Counting down from 20, stay tuned to find out if you agree with number one. Let's go. Number 20, Stillness Speaks by Eckhart Tolle. Your innermost sense of self, of who you are, is inseparable from stillness. This is the I am, that is deeper than the name and form. Stillness is your essential nature. What is stillness? The inner space or awareness in which the words on this page are being perceived and become thoughts. Without that awareness, there would be no perception, no thoughts, no world. See that in every moment of notice in the song that's around you, you are not thinking. You are aware, but not thinking. Most people spend their entire life in prison within the confines of their own thoughts. They never go beyond a narrow mind-made, personalized sense of self that is conditioned by the past. Here is a new spiritual practice for you. Don't take your thoughts too seriously. Don't take your thoughts too seriously. Spiritual awakening is awakening from the dream of thought. The next step in human evolution is to transcend thought. This is now our urgent task. It doesn't mean not to think anymore, but simply not to be completely identified with thought, possessed by thought. Become at ease with the state of not knowing. And number 19, A Course in Miracles by Helen Shookman. The ego is the belief behind the separation. It is our core self-concept which says we are separate, autonomous beings. The ego has one need, to stay in business, to confirm itself, to reinforce its reality, to protect itself from God's love. The world is not an object reality. It is only a dream, a projection of our belief in separateness. A law of mind is that mind causes its own experience. We attempt to fill our needs with external things, situations and events based on the belief that we are inherently lacking. In our search for happiness, the body is both a means and an end. Forgiveness releases us from our fixation on our separate self and allows our love to flow out to the world. Extending forgiveness to others heals them in mind and body. This is the main sense of the word miracle. Forgiveness looks past differences and reveals our underlying sameness. And number 18, Creativity by Osho. Creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. If you want to create, you have to get rid of all conditioning. Otherwise, your creativity will be nothing but copying. It will be just a carbon copy. You can be creative only if you are an individual. The creator cannot follow the well-trodden path. He has to go alone. He has to be a dropout from the mind, from the collective psychology. Consciousness is being, compassion, feeling. Creativity is action. Action is always new and fresh like the dew drops in the morning. And a person who is a person of action is also fresh and young. It is not a question of what you do, it is a question of how you do it, and ultimately it is a question rather you do it or you allow it to happen. Be a passive watcher. The ego is nothing but all the thoughts you have accumulated in the past. One has to become more of the ears and less of the eyes. People go on living in a mental world of their own creation. When you drop the ego, you drop a whole world that you have created around it. You never see that which is, you go on distorting reality. In the present moment, all past is conditioned, and in the present moment, all future is potential. And number 17, The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. To play successfully the game of life, we must train the imagining faculty. A person with an imaginary faculty trained to imagine only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart. Health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, his highest ideals. Whatever man feels deeply or imagines clearly is impressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in minutest detail. The object of the game in life is to see clearly one's good 
and to obliterate all mental pictures of evil. Man can only receive what he sees himself receiving. Fear attracted the thing and fearlessness removed it. All in harmony on external indicates there is mental in harmony. As within, so the without. Nothing on earth can resist an absolutely non-resistant person. The Chinese say that water is the most powerful element because it is perfectly non-resistant. It can wear away a rock and sweep all before it. The robbers of time are the past and the future. Man should bless the past and forget it if it keeps him in bondage and bless the future, knowing it has storing for him endless joys, but live fully in the now. Fear is misdirected energy and must be redirected and transmuted into faith. And number 16, The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. There are four steps to intention. Discipline, wisdom, love, and surrender. Start. What's one thing that you could be doing now that is constant with your higher self that will have the highest possible benefit in your life? Stop. What's one thing that if you continue to do, although you know it's not consistent with your higher self, that if you stop doing would have the greatest benefit of your life? 80 to 90% of our thoughts and actions are habitual. Treat yourself if you have already are what you'd like to become. Walk into situations as if you have already done it. If you want to be this, then the only way you were ever going to be that is if you to start constantly be that now. Start practicing being who you want now and embrace that. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. You will feel most on purpose when you were giving your life away by serving others. Anything can be taken from you, but your last freedom. It is your freedom to choose how you respond to this moment. If you want a meaningful life, know your strengths. Use them often on something bigger than yourself. Truly give yourself to the world. And number 15, you can heal your life by Louise Hay. Everything is connected and you can change your world by sheer mental power. From your body to your well-being to the nature of your very spirit. What we think about ourselves becomes the truth for us. We are responsible for everything that is happening to us. Since the thoughts we think and the words we speak create our experiences. The thoughts we think and the words we speak create our experiences. The innermost belief Louise Hay considers the main culprit for everything bad in your life. I'm not good enough. Try shifting your mindset from I should to I could. Turn the negative affirmations into positive ones. Dis-ease can be healed if we are willing to change the way we think and believe and act. Forgiveness means letting go of the past. Let go of all the hatred. The best way to do this is by forgiving those the anger against whom holds you back. Here's your mantra. I lovingly forgive and release all of the past. I choose to fill my world with joy. I love and approve of myself. And number 14. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Roman Sharma. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your thoughts. There are no mistakes, only lessons. See setbacks of opportunity for personal expansion and growth. When an undesirable thought occupies the focal point of your mind, immediately replace it with an uplifting one. Everything is created twice, first in the mind, and then it is realized in a physical form. We can visualize everything we want to be, do, or have. The secret of happiness is simple. Find out what you truly love to do and then direct all your energy towards doing it. Once you do this, abundance flows into your life and all your desires are filled with ease and grace. The purpose of your life is a life of purpose. Enlightenment comes through constant cultivation of your mind, body and soul. Do the things you fear and the death of fear is certain. Do the things you fear and the death of fear is certain. By elevating the lives of others, your life reaches its highest dimensions. We are all here for some special reason. Stop being a prisoner of your past. Become the architect of your future. And number 13, I hope I screw this up, by Carl Cease. Something I've learned is that sharing my deepest truth, no matter how scary it is in the moment, is freedom. My only pain would come from repressing that truth. Anyone who has made a true impact on this planet at one point had to step out of that expectation of the people around them and listen to the inner calling that moved them into a place of originality beyond what they had done before. I'm not my past story. In fact, I'm not any story. I'm just this moment. 
And the more I release those limitations, the more I'll begin to open up to the possibility and make room for an entirely new perspective on myself to come through. When you step into opportunity, you cut off the fear. When you step into fear, you cut off the opportunity. Listening to the calling within yourself instead of looking for external guidance. Allowing yourself to fully experience every emotion that you feel is the gateway to actual transformation. When we let go of something that is taking up space in our lives, we make room for something else to come in. When your intention beats habit, you win the game of life. We're always looking for reasons in our external circumstances to prove why we shouldn't be happy. A leap can be scary, but on the other side of it is growth and new opportunities that you can't see until you take that leap. The only difference between you and everyone else is a story in your head. When you work for the universe, you're never unemployed. When you work for the universe, you're never unemployed. And number 12, Essential Zen Habits by Leo Babayuta. We struggle with habit change because we have unrealistic expectations of how things will turn out how others should be, and how we should be. When our expectations aren't met, we feel disappointed, frustrated, and sad. When we turn from our mind-made movie and embrace reality, we overcome our inner resistance to habit change. The childish mind is the part of the mind that complains about how things are, that fears, discomforts, that just wants pleasure and comfort, that doesn't want things to be difficult. Gratitude is a great antidote to resistance that we can practice every day including when our childish mind eventually starts to rebel against doing the habit. Take mistakes in stride and take the long view that what really matters is not whether you mess up a day or two, but what you do over weeks and months and years. One of the most difficult tasks that we can give to our childish mind is letting go of what it really wants and accepting life as it is, seeing that it is already enough. Watch and urge gently, without judgment or wishing that the feeling wasn't there. Treat it as a friend, kindly, and see that this feeling is impermanent. Just arises but will pass like a cloud. This is the whole meditation. Just watch with curiosity and kindness, not attaching to the feeling or needing to act on it. And number 11, Awareness, the key to living in balance by Osho. If you watch yourself, you will know how mechanically you behave. When you work with nature, nature is alert. Man has a great unconsciousness hidden in him. The conscious mind is only one-tenth and the unconscious mind is nine times bigger than the conscious. You are just living in a small corner of your being, the tiny conscious mind. It is as if somebody has a palace and has completely forgotten about the palace and has started living on the porch and thinks this is all. Man's ego never wants to accept that there is anything higher than him. The only thing that has to be learned is watchfulness. Watch. Watch every act that you do. Watch every thought that passes in your mind. Watch every desire that takes possession of you. As if you become aware, a miracle starts happening. Many things that you used to do simply disappear. When you are present without thinking, you are for the very first time spiritual. A new dimension opens. That dimension is awareness. Ego is a false sense of self. Future is pure potentiality. Unless it happens, you cannot be certain about it. Past is pure actuality. It has happened. Now nothing can be done about it. Between these two, man stands in the present, always thinking the impossibles. No problem is serious. The moment you say no problem is serious, the problem is almost 99% dead. The man of character reacts. The man of consciousness acts. And number 10, the art of happiness by the Dalai Lama. Happiness is determined more by the state of one's mind than by one's external conditions, circumstances or events. At least once One's basic survival needs are met. Happiness can be achieved through the systematic training of our hearts and minds, through reshaping our attitudes and outlook. Be gentle, not aggressive. Suffering equals resistance to change. Don't fear, avoid or reject suffering. It's natural and needs to be dealt with. Learn and train to go from negative, anger, hatred, attachment, to positive, love, compassion, forgiveness, emotions. Be determined not to let others make me angry or suffer. It doesn't matter what they do or how they treat me. It only matters the result I want. Have it clear. Peace of mind plus reaching my current objective. Meditate on my mind. Feel it. Meditate. Have no thought but be mindful. Feel my conscience in the now. In a neutral state. Breathe. And number nine, the seven spiritual laws of success by Deepak Chopra. 
Success in life could be defined as the continued expansion of happiness and the progressive realization of worthy goals. Success is the ability to fulfill your desires with effortless ease. True success is the experience of the miraculous. It is the unfolding of the divinity within us. We are in our essential state, pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is pure potentiality. It is the field of all possibilities and infinite creativity. The flow of life is nothing other than the harmonious interaction of all the elements and forces that structure the field of existence. Your future is generated by the choices you are making in every moment of your life. Nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease and abandon carefreeness. This is the principle of least action, of no resistance. Do less and accomplish more. Acceptance simply means that you make a commitment. Today, while I will accept people, situations, circumstances, and events as they occur. This means I will know that this moment is as it should be, because the whole universe is as it should be. In order to acquire anything in the physical universe, you have to relinquish your attachment to it. You have taken manifestation in physical form to fulfill a purpose. You have a unique talent and a unique way of expressing it. And number eight, The Way of Zen by Alan Watts. A way of liberation can have no positive definition. It has to be defined by what it is not, as how a sculptor reveals the image by chipping away what it isn't. We define ourselves by what we have done. What we are feels fleeting, intangible, but what we have done is fixed and final. The Tao is indefinable, concrete process of the world, the way of life. The word means a way or road, and sometimes to speak. The goal is not to reduce the human mind to vacancy, but to bring it into play its innate and spontaneous intelligence by using it without forcing it. All forms of Buddhism subscribe to the middle way, between the extremes of angels and demons, ascetic and sensualist, and claim that supreme awakening or Buddhahood can be attained only from the human state. Names are useful, but we can't confuse the measure with the world being measured, of identifying money with wealth, fixed convention with fluid reality. You could also say that life is frustration, not suffering. Reality isn't permanent nor impermanent. It cannot be categorized. The Eightfold Path of Buddha's Dharma, the method or doctrine through which self frustration comes to an end. Complete view, complete understanding, complete speech, complete action, complete vocation, complete application, complete recollectedness, and complete contemplation. There is never anything but the present, and if one cannot live there, one cannot live anywhere. Zen has no goal. It is traveling without point, with nowhere to go. To travel is to be alive, but to arrive is to be dead. A world which focuses on destinations, which only cares about getting somewhere as fast as possible, becomes a world without substance. Zen is a liberation from time. If we open our eyes and see clearly, it becomes obvious that there is no other time than this instant, and that the past and future are abstractions without any concrete reality. And number seven, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. To recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity the beginning of healing and transcendentness. The more you make your thoughts, beliefs, into your identity, the more cut off you and from the spiritual dimension within yourself. How spiritual you are has nothing to do with what you believe, but everything to do with your state of consciousness. Ego is no more than this, identification with form, which primarily means thought forms. Most people are still completely identified with the incessant stream of the mind of compulsive thinking, most of it repetitive and pointless. Sometimes letting things go is an act of far greater power than defending or hanging on. When you are completely identified with a role, you confuse a pattern of behavior with who you are, and you take yourself very seriously. Give up defining yourself, to yourself or to others. Whenever you interact with people, don't be there primarily as a function or a role, but as a field of conscious presence. Your personality, which is conditioned by the past, then becomes your prison. The beginning of freedom from the pain body lies first of all in the realization that you have a pain body. To be in alignment with what it means to be in a relationship of inner non-resistance with what happens. It means not to label it mentally as good or bad, but to let it be. The most important, the primordial relationship in your life is your relationship with the now, or rather with 
whatever form the now takes, that is to say, what is or what happens. This too will pass. And number six, Courage, The Joy of Living Dangerously by Osho. Nothing is certain. Life is full of uncertainties, full of surprises. That is its beauty. The very readiness to remain in uncertainty is courage. This very readiness to be in uncertainty is trust. An intelligent person is one who remains alert whatsoever the situation and responds to it with his whole heart. You cannot be truthful if you are not courageous. To accept this challenge of the unknown in spite of all fears is courage. Smile with nature. Mind is nothing but the accumulated past, the memory. Never be an imitator, be always original. Don't become a carbon copy. The man of understanding dies at every moment to the past and is reborn again to the future. So always listen for the unknown and gather courage to move into the unknown. To grow to your destiny needs great courage. It needs fearlessness. Love is not a relationship. Love is a state of being. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Meditation is just the courage to be silent and alone. Slowly, slowly, you start feeling a new quality to yourself, a new aliveness, a beauty, a new intelligence, which is not borrowed from anybody, which is growing within you. In this world, to be an individual is the greatest courage. Meditation is nothing but the discovery of the inner self. Meditation should be an inner shrine. Whenever you feel that the world is too much for you, you can move into your shrine. You can have a bath in your inner being. And number five, The Road Less Travelled by Scott Peake. Life is difficult mainly because the process of confronting and solving problems is painful. The benefit that results may be pleasurable, but the process is painful. And since life poses an endless series of problems, life can be painful. Yet it is this process of meeting and solving problems that gives life its meaning. Problems are the cutting edge between failure and success. The key to learning to deal constructively with our problems lies in a system of discipline comprised of four tools. Delaying gratification, acceptance of responsibility, dedication to truth, and balance. Problems do not go away. They must be worked through or they remain. Forever a barrier to our growth and development of the spirit. Never speak falsehoods and bear in mind that the act of withholding the truth is always potentially a lie that requires proper weight attention to be given to the significant moral decision involved. Honesty requires self-discipline, which is why many people opt for a lie of very limited honesty slash openness, hiding themselves and their maps from their world. To live joyously, we must also possess the capacity to live in the present and act spontaneously. Self-discipline is a self-enlarging process, for all that is given up, even more is gained. Throughout the whole of life, one must continue to learn to live, and what will amaze you even more, throughout life, one must learn to die. And number four, The Alchemist by Polo Coelho. Fear is a bigger obstacle than the obstacle itself. Any new pursuit requires entering uncharted territory. That's scary. But with any great risk comes great reward. The experiences you will gain in pursuing your dream will make it all worthwhile. What is true will always endure. Truth cannot be veiled by smoke and mirrors. It will always stand firm. When you're searching for the right decision, it will be the one that withstands the test of time and the weight of scrutiny. Gratitude is the practice of finding the good in each day. If you can concentrate always on the present, you'll be a happy man. Growth, change, and evolution are woven into the fabric of reality. Becoming a better version of yourself creates a ripple effect that benefits everything around you, your lifestyle, your family, your friends, and your community. Be unrealistic. See the world in terms of what you would like to see happen, not what actually does. The secret of life, though, is to fail seven times and get up eight times. Focus on your own journey. You can study, read, and listen until you turn blue in the face, but the full experience is when you take action and let the rubber meet the road. Once you've done aiming, pull the trigger. And number three, the bucket of a guitar. We bind ourselves to our desires and desire-ridden actions and suffer from ignorance and delusion, not knowing our true nature and true purpose. The Bhagavad Gita is about human suffering as its resolution through spiritual effort. It brings spirituality to a worldly life and suggests how to face the challenges and compulsions of human life with faith and devotion, without becoming lost in egotistic pursuits and selfish actions. Know that you are not the body, but the spiritual self. Stabilize your mind by overcoming desires. 
do your duty with detachment, renouncing the doership. True renunciation is renunciation of doership. Acknowledge the presence of God in you and in everything. Surrender to God with devotion. The solution to the problem of suffering is overcoming desires by practicing detachment, renunciation, selfless actions, devotional services, equanimity, sameness, and discretion. And number two of the top 20 spirituality books is Be Love Now by Ramdas. Love is a state of being, not a trip from here to there. Unconditional love really exists in each of us. It is part of our deep inner being. It is not so much an active emotion as a state of being. Paradoxically, we have let go of the emotional love to find the soul love that illuminates us from within. Shifting our identification from the ego to the heart mind is the beginning of the individual spiritual work. That pure awareness is the territory of the soul. The quality of the soul is not just awareness, but also love and compassion, peace and wisdom. Love everyone and serve everyone. Love everyone and serve everyone. One way of remembering to stay in the heart is to hang out with other people who are on the same journey. Love with no object. Know that once you learn to lose yourself, you will reach the beloved. Amid the divine play, we seek fulfillment, perfection, flow, freedom, enlightenment, oneness. The paradox of the one is that when the ego dissolves, there's an experience, but no experiencer. The only thing a man must renounce if he wishes to attain the supreme truth is the notion of individuality, nothing else. Your work is to practice contentment and surrender. When you perceive yourself and others as souls, you bring love, truth, and compassion to your interaction with others. Then, you are the mirror of their soul. A soul recognizes another soul. And the number one spirituality book is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. We are here to enable the divine purpose of the universe to unfold. That is how important you are. The beginning of freedom is the realization that you are not the possessing entity, the thinker. Become aware of a silent but powerful sense of presence. There is one certain criterion by which you can measure your success in the practice. The degree of peace that you feel within. The degree of peace that you feel within. So the single most vital step on your journey towards enlightenment is this. Learn to disidentify from your mind. Every time you create a gap in the stream of the mind, the light of your consciousness grows stronger. Pleasure is always derived from something outside of you, whereas joy arises from within. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Surrender to what is. Say yes to life and see how life suddenly starts working for you rather than against you. Death is a stripping away of all that is not you. The secret of life is to die before you die and find that there is no death. The present moment is all you ever have. There is never a time when your life is not this moment. Is this not a fact? You may find it hard to recognize that time is the cause of your suffering or your problems. Only a surrendered person has spiritual power. If there were no illusion, there would be no enlightenment. It is through the world and ultimately through you that the unmanifested knows itself. True communication is communion. To offer no resistance to life is to be in a state of grace, ease and lightness. And when you surrender to what is, and so become fully present, the past seeds to have any power. You do not need it anymore. Presence is the key. The now is the key. And that's a wrap on the top 20 spirituality books I have come across and done book summaries on. Check out our YouTube channel, bestbookbits.com, for over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. And check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for over 500 written audio and PDF book summaries you can download and read in the PDF in video categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationship, sales, spirituality, six tests, time management, and travel. If you're into the audio version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits to find our podcast and listen to audio book summaries. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening, and if I've missed a spiritual book that you want me to do a summary on, let me know in the comments below. Take care. Bye-bye now.